beautiful and intelligent do we need to ask for more joining us today on style live uh, former miss world rosanna davidson hi rosanna how are you hello i'm very good and thank you very much for having me here today you're more than welcome and listen i would like to start talking uh, about um, you know your title of miss world actually mm. miss ireland before mm. and then you know going into miss world how was the whole experience for you you know the whole experience sort of came about accidentally i was just you know, a normal sort of 19 year old girl. I'd just done my first year in university and I was at a shopping center and a scout came up and said, would you like to enter this regional competition? I said, no, not really into beauty competitions. No, thank you. And she was persistent and she said, come on, we need to make up numbers, please. Mm -hmm. So eventually she, um, I, I agreed to enter the competition and you know, won that competition to my surprise and didn't think much of it. And then realized I was entered in Miss Ireland about yeah. three weeks later. So entered Miss Ireland, I had no big ambitions to model or be in beauty pageants, but it just sort of happened. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was, that would have been say August 2003, and then I discovered that I would be going to the Miss World pageant later that year. Mm -hmm. So of course I thought, okay, better prepare myself. So I did, I worked hard to prepare myself for Miss World and went over there and it was a month spent in China, which was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. um, we went from Hong Kong to Beijing to Xi'an up north to Shanghai. Um, saw everything, you know, the Great Wall, the Warriors of Xi'an, um, so many different sites. And then the competition itself was held um, on an island sort of south of Hong Kong called Hainan Island. Mm -hmm. And again, it was just a really exciting experience. You know, as I said, I was young and 19 years old and um, it was just so new and I had never been to China before so I have really good a, memories. A different world as well, like yeah, part of being. really yeah. different world. Yeah. And you were actually the first Irish woman to win the title, right? Yeah, yeah, well it's a great honour to be the first Irish woman and I think hopefully it put the country on the map and made people realise that um, there, there's an amazing country here um, on the outskirts of Europe and um, hopefully it did some good things for the country. And uh, listen, another thing I would like to ask you, um, talking about your modeling career, uh, how did you decide, you know, uh, after Miss Ireland then to become a professional model? Well, again, um, after my year as Miss World, I deferred my year in college for Miss World yeah. under sort of advice. Um, but towards the end of the year I did, I went back to my university degree and I finished that. Um, it was Sociology and History of Art in UCD oh. here in Dublin. And then after that, I... I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I had enough of studying for a while, so I decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back to the modeling for a while and then decide what I want to do. And that was in 2006. And actually, again, it, it really took off for me. And I've been lucky enough to work um, consistently here in Ireland as well as around Europe for the past, whatever, five, six, seven years. So, um, you know, it's it's been wonderful and it's great to be able to travel and the Miss World name is recognized all over the world. So I'm very lucky in that sense. And uh, um, how does it feel for you like to perform in front of a camera, uh, for example, during a photo shoot? Well, it's funny because I um, I wouldn't say I'm shy when just in real life, but um, I wouldn't be an exhibi exhibitionist by any means, just in normal day to day life. But when you get dressed in, say, certain clothes for a photo shoot and you have to adopt a character and it's almost like acting you sort of act the way the clothes make you feel and you're you, I think it gives you a, a sort of a, a great lease of confidence to be in front of the camera and I think for most girls they would say the same that um, you really want to give your best and embody the clothes yeah and uh, uh, of course I've seen you on the catwalk and uh, I have to tell it I, I've noticed uh, uh, you know some difference from the way actually uh, you you do uh, perform a mm. dress, uh, I would say. Like you have uh, a lot of professionalism and style mm. uh, when you're on the catwalk. Um, how it is actually for you to, to perform a dress? Well, again, to do the catwalk is a great adrenaline rush because it's, you know, it's instant, it's live. It's not like you can be in a photo shoot and use yeah. airbrushing or anything like that to um, hide things. You know, it's, it's there and you, ha you have to be um, quick. Mm -hmm. So, well, getting changed and ready anyway. But, um, you know, again, it's great to, to be able to put on a dress or an outfit and walk the way or act the way you feel the dress should be presented. So, again, I think it's, it's acting, it's getting into character, mm -hmm. and um, it's a great buzz. 
And do you like to interact uh, with the public as well while uh, you are on the catwalk, for example? Well, absolutely. I think it's nice to not look too serious. Again, it depends on the designer, it depends on the location, the mood. But I think it's nice to um, just to smile a bit as well and to look happy. And um, But again, it, it depends on the factors involved. But I think the audience does appreciate when, you know, you get a smile or um, you, you look like you're enjoying yourself. Is there uh, any particular style, for example, in terms of fashion that you can say is your favorite one? Um, well, again, when I'm not working, I'm very casual. I just like, you know, my skinny jeans, t-shirts. I love shoes. I'm a shoe addict, though, so yeah. I'm always wearing my high heels. Yeah. Um, so they're the one thing I do sort of indulge in a little bit. But, you know, otherwise, um, because I have to dress so much for work, mm -hmm. I, I just prefer to be casual and laid back otherwise. Very good. Uh, all right, Rosanna, um, I would like to ask you something. Uh, you are actually a, a very uh, photogenic person, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes, you are. And uh, um, have you ever think, for example, about uh, having a career in film or television? Um, I, I suppose I have. I've been lucky enough to have opportunities to work a lot in television, and it's something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have, I suppose, in the past actively pursued it a bit more, but it is a competitive industry, and I, I need to get more experience, really, in front of the camera before I do any more. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, as I said, I've been given plenty of good opportunities, and hopefully down the line it's something I'll, I'll do more of. Um, as with film, again, I've had a bit of experience, but and it's something I'd love to do if the opportunity arose. Um, but at the moment, I find I'm so busy with everything else that I, I really don't have that much extra time, you know, to take classes or anything like that. But, you know, I would absolutely embrace the opportunity. Um, again, it's it's very tough, very competitive. The amount of people who want to, to be an actor or actors that are out of work as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I remain realistic as well about the statistics. Mm -hmm. But you never know. But you yeah. never know, exactly. <laughs> and uh, listen, how was the experience of Holiday on Ice? Oh, Holiday on Ice was um, amazing. You know, I was very lucky um, to have just finished my years with Mo as Miss World um, and then to sign this deal with Holiday on Ice. And it took me again traveling all over Europe. Um, it was yeah, it was great fun because, again, I was, I was able to concentrate on my studies mm -hmm. and then pop off to France or Germany or um Amsterdam places like that for um just an evening sort of once a week or once a fortnight so um that was yeah a great experience and uh, another thing about your career you, you actually moved uh, as well into journalism right so mm. uh, how do you find to express yourself through writing well what I found when I left university was that well because my degree was essay based I really missed writing yeah. and I missed you know just going into that headspace where you lose track of time and you can just sit in front of your computer so um, the opportunity arose that I would um, be able to you know write a column for the Evening Herald newspaper here and one for the Dubliner magazine as well yeah. and that was last year and I've been doing that for a year so really enjoying that and there is also a nice interaction uh, uh, with the people, like uh, questions from uh, the public there. And yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's a really nice way, as you say, to interact with the public, to get feedback, um, just to, again, stretch myself a little bit more. You know, I write every single word, so mm -hmm. nobody sort of does it for me. So, it's and, and you have a blog as well, right? I do, yeah. yeah. I have a website sort of blog that I try to keep updated, although it's, it's tough to find the time with everything else. Mm -hmm. um, I'm back to studying as well now, part time. Yeah. So, when yeah, I when yeah, I have time yeah. for everything, I try and put it all in. One thing that I really like about you is that you are challenging yourself into different kind of subjects. Mm. So first, uh, uh, you had uh, a degree with honors actually in uh, sociology and mm. history of art, yeah. right? Uh, then uh, another diploma in uh, event management. Yeah. Right? And now you are actually studying biomedicine and uh, and nutrition. nutrition. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, the, well, the first degree came about because I was really interested in the subjects. Um, with the PR and event management diploma, I found that I was so involved in one side of PR and events, yeah. you know, I suppose in front of the cameras or in front of the scenes, that I really wanted to figure out and see what happens behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so that was just out of personal interest. Um, and then I've always had an interest in physiology, biology, nutrition, um, you know how the foods we eat affect our our health and our, our looks 
So I decided to take up this part-time three-year course in biomedicine and nutrition. Yeah. So I've completed the first year in biomedicine and next month I start back with biochemistry and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So again, it's challenging, but you know, I love, I love that uh, I can't be sort of pigeonholed into one area. You know, it's, it's lovely to be a whole bundle of sort of contradictions and, oh, yeah. um, you know, people don't expect maybe a, a model to be doing something else different like that. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's challenging my brain as well to, to do different things. And um, I love to keep busy. Yeah. So. I admire you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, uh, do you see a career actually in, in uh, one of these fields, in uh, um, sociology or uh, in uh, nutrition? Um, probably, yeah, well, when I qualify, I'll be 29 in sort of two years' time. So I would like to, in my 30s, start delving into the field, mm -hmm. you know, when what I'm doing sort of ends and I, I feel it's time to step away. Um, so it's more just a uh, insurance for the future mm -hmm. kind of thing. Sure, I, you yeah. know, I'll have the qualification. But again, I don't think it's that far removed from what I'm doing at the moment. You know, modeling goes hand in hand with health and nutrition Absolutely. anyway. And girls, I always find they're looking for tips and ideas and information on what is healthy and what's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah. find there's a not, not enough information out there. Um, yeah. You know, big industries, you know, sort of the dairy and meat industries push all this information on us. And mm -hmm. people don't realize that there are other options. Um, And also down to personal experience, I became a vegetarian sort of nine years ago or something like that. And I found my health, my energy, everything changed dramatically. Okay. So it's, you know, it's based on interest as well as personal experience. And talking about uh, keeping fit and nutrition. Mm. So how do you keep fit? And, uh, you know, talk, uh, just tell us about your nutrition side. Well, in terms of keeping fit, I, I go to Pilates classes and... You know, I would love to say, oh, it's easy and I don't have to do anything to keep fit. But, you know, maybe that, yeah. maybe when I was 18, I didn't have to yeah. do much. But now, yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Um, so I do. I train with a personal trainer twice a week um, and I go to Pilates classes once or twice a week. And then as well, I like to I have a dog, so I love to walk the dog or go for a jog with the dog mm -hmm. in the local park. So, you know, most days I try to do something that's active. Um, and I, I think as well, if you do something first thing in the morning, then you feel good for the day. Sure. It really helps your feel good hormones and your mm -hmm. serotonin levels. And um, it makes you feel more positive. So in I do it. Personal balance as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I do it as much for health and sort of keeping weight in check as, as much as I do it for my mental you know, focus mm -hmm. and concentration. So. Absolutely. All right, Rosanna, I would like to ask you something. Uh, you know, we, we all have to be pretty strong in this world. Mm. So how do you fight back uh, adversities or envies? Um, yeah, you're right. You know, we all have to. Life is uh, not a fight, but, you know, it, it's good to, as a woman to be, to be strong. Um, I find that the best way is prevention, actually, just to move yourself away from negative people, negative situations, negative influences. And then you find that there's very little to kind of come up against or fight against. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose that's only something I've learned as I've got older. Um, you know, it's better just to keep a positive frame of mind, you know, optimistic um, outlook. And when you do maybe come across adverse situations, to deal with them in the best possible, in the most optimistic way, mm -hmm. you know, everything can be dealt with in some way, which is my attitude. I try to always keep a positive mm -hmm. attitude. And, you know, people maybe that are negative or um, have a negative influence on my life, I just sort of remove myself. So I find rather than fighting and being angry or aggressive, I just think best best way is just stay calm and just remove yourself in the, the politest and calmest possible way. Yeah, and keep smiling to life. Yes, that's yes. it. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, you're, of course, uh, the daughter of the wonderful singer Chris de Bourg. Mm. And uh, your mom, Diane, uh, has been a model as well. Um, and another wonderful thing, you have found love with Wesley. Yes. <laughs> uh, how much uh, is important for you, uh, let's say, the love and support uh, of your family and of uh, uh, your boyfriend? Well, it's absolutely everything to me. Um, you know, I couldn't do what I do or continue sort of a career, I suppose, that takes me Uh, out of the country and from place to place and keeps me busy without the, the support and understanding of my family and boyfriend and friends. Mm -hmm. And they come first every time. You know, they 
are the most important thing. If anything happened to them, I'd be straight over to them. I'd, you know, I'd give up everything really for my, my family and boyfriend and friends. So, um, you know, I'm very lucky that I have a really strong network of supportive people around me and I'm supportive equally to them as well. But, you know, I think it's so important to surround yourself with people who actually love you and support you and have the best intentions in mind for you because then you, you'll never stray off the path. And uh, do you find, let's say, a, a mutual uh, inspiration, you know, from, from them as well? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, the people in my life are sort of my rocks, so I would go to them for advice and support, and they'd come to me for, for similar reasons. So I think, yeah, it's good to have that mutual um, sort of understanding and, and balance, a symbiosis, really. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a great position to be in, and... Um, you know, it's important then just to, to give lots of energy and time to the people you love. Absolutely. And uh, one thing I would like to ask you, uh, do you have uh, any uh, recurring dreams or recurring thoughts? Um, I wouldn't say, I'd, I'd have very vivid dreams, um, sort of at night, but I, I can't think of any recurring ones. Um, there's nothing, you know, even if I'm sort of anxious about something or thinking about something too much, I just try to use methods you know stress relaxation methods to to remove anything like that so um you know I, I do meditation and pilates really helps with um sort of relaxing the mind um so no there's nothing too dramatic <laughs> and um, um what about for example uh, upcoming projects uh, or uh, you know campaigns that, that you might be working on at the moment well, there's lots going on all the time um, between here in Ireland and Europe. Um, the last week I've been to sort of Vienna, Ukraine. Um, I go to Germany a lot, um, France, the UK. Um, but a great campaign um, I've just worked on in Ireland is um, with the Kilkenny Design Store on Nassau Street and the Irish Heart Foundation, where the Irish Heart Foundation are raising funds by asking uh, women to hand knit these gorgeous gloves, hats and scarves for winter. Mm -hmm. And all the sets are different colours, they're, they're all unique because obviously they're, they're hand, um, handmade. And I just did the photo shoot for the in-store campaign a few days ago, so that'll be launched um, I think next week. So anybody who's looking in Kilkenny Design will see these gorgeous um, hand knitted scarves and hats and things. And obviously the proceeds from all the sales go to the charity. So I'm really excited about this. With the cold weather coming in, everyone needs to stock up on their winter woolies. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be involved in something like this. Fantastic. Listen, Rosanna, it was absolutely lovely to meet you. Thank you, you so, so much. You too. Thank, Thank you. you.